Adam and welcome back to my channel where I make a tabletop role playing game from scratch on camera. Before we start today's episode I just want to remind you of the 96 likes. Before I started this project of Explorers RPG I have been using this book to just note down different stuff that is role playing related and uh, well all of this is fun and interesting for world builders, for role players and so on. So 96 likes and I will go through all the 96 pages that I have here. And while you're down there, please press the subscribe button because well, I want subscribers. Last episode, we talked about hex flowers and how I'm going to use weather effects in my role playing game. But this episode I want to go back to basics and go back actually to episode 3 with my resolution system. Now I have a goal in mind for the future episodes because episode 25 will be uh, the episode in which I have been doing this here for well half a year so i have been publishing videos every week for a year and i want to celebrate that in the future with a product a specific product that i can use it won't be a fully fledged role-playing system but it will be a product that i can use for future but it will be a product that will sort of establish this game in a way. So what I'm talking about is a vertical slice of my game. Now I'm not a game designer and I'm not a product developer, so I don't really know what a vertical slice is, but what I've gathered from what I've read on the internet is that it is a fully functional product fully polished fully published fully a sole product that you can use but it's a very very small one um, so in terms of a role-playing game that would be that you have uh, fully fledged resolution systems rules characters uh, you have encounters art, formatting, absolutely everything, but it will only last for maybe one hour of content. And this is what I'm going to do. I want to go through all of the things that I have now, develop a few more things to round out everything, so that on episode 25, I will have a version of this role-playing game that you can play and you can just pick up this pamphlet i think it's probably going to be a pamphlet uh, pick up this pamphlet go to your local role-playing game people put it on the table say i want to run this and no prep needed nothing just read through it go through all the motion uh, and play for one hour basically and, and then it stops and um, but, but that you will have a full experience from my game so what I want to do is to put in the entrance right here and I also maybe want to add in the uh, the inner entrance and have the inner entrance and the entrance as one encounter that you will be doing and then have a resolution system pre-generated characters so here you go with a few things that you can do go through the motions and do a play testing session that is what I want to do so that's why I'm going back to basics today and looking back at our resolution system because I don't like it or to phrase it better I like it but in a different way so in episode 3 we talked about the resolution system and you might not have 
remember exactly how it worked but well basically what it does is that you have five different attributes you have might agility knowledge senses and presence and each of these have a die attached to them. Uh, a D4 is very bad and a D12 is very good. And then you roll two dice, one from each stat uh, that is involved in the action that you're trying to do. So for instance, if you want to hit somebody with a sword, you are using both your might, your strength basically, and your agility to hit somebody and then you would use the might die and the agility die you would roll both of them and then you would roll them against a target value now if one of them was uh, equal to or higher that would be a success if both of them were that's a critical success if none of them were that would be a failure and if both of them are ones so that's a fumble. Now, what I like about this resolution system is all the different ways you can combine stuff. Uh, it's very easy to learn, you use two dice, you can use the whole range of dice instead of just focusing on one, and you don't have to have multiple different types of dice you can have two sets of these and you're fine you can even manage to do it with only one set if you're desperate um, but you can you don't have to use many dice in that case and of course you can alter the role in various ways that are more interesting than just plus or minus or add another die or re remove a die and so on. So I, I like this way of thinking. But there's one thing in this system that is really uh, imbalanced and that is the attributes. You see, there's a thing that I've been noticing when I've been playtesting this and looking through all of my notes and stuff is that this here attribute system is really well it's it's imbalanced basically one problem that i have with many role playing games is that the stats don't really uh, mimic the real world in many ways so let's for instance say whenever you're attacking someone in D&D &D, you're using your strength if you're trying to hit them with your sword and that doesn't really make sense in the real world you wouldn't be better at hitting someone if you're stronger in the real world it would preferably be more a dexterity thing but I don't think dexterity is uh, well correct because well you need physical strength as well so it's like a combination of the two different things and I didn't really like that you had to like choose and go in one path or the other it's usually when it comes to resolving something you usually combine different stats and attributes that you have when you're, you're trying to do something and this is why I first wanted to have this combination system where you could combine the different uh, attributes to make up a role. One thing that is very imbalanced here is that the might and agility combination is much more uh, frequently used than any other combination. So for might and agility, you would say, yeah, climbing, swimming, running, fighting. Uh, there, there's like just tons of stuff where you both use your dexterity and your, your balance, body control and so on, all of these things. And you use your core strength to, to do it. And there's a combination of these two while the other three here are more isolated 
you wouldn't have, for instance, a presence knowledge role. What would a presence knowledge role be? Whenever you're trying to be charismatic and try to either obtain or recall information at the same time. So recalling information while also doing some presence that would probably be like reciting a speech maybe um, okay but that's how often would you you like recite the speech that's not very frequently would you be doing that at least not in my game and the same with like what would a sense might thing be when you're using your strength and your senses at the same time you're monitoring your muscles all of these combinations they're really hard to come up with concrete times where you would combine them except for might and agility and this is why uh, we i want to change this so what i want to do is actually just scratch all of this i don't want to use it anymore what i'm currently want to do is to have a new set of attributes and the new set is body mind senses and presence so body that is both might and agility it's, it's both whenever you're doing something athletic or acrobatic or something in that those lines where you're using your body you're using well the body so the scratching might and agility removing them and just having body uh, so basically when it comes to a D&D &D thing you're basically combining strength, dexterity and constitution which is a, a lot of things to combine but um, I think that let's say in D&D &D, strength is basically a dump stat uh, most of the time uh, it depends on your character but it is a dump stat for most of people so um, it's not very much used. Dexterity, very powerful. And constitution, if you don't use constitution in terms of hit points, because I don't, uh, hit points are generated in a different way in my game. So if you're just using constitution and not thinking about hit points, then constitution is also a dump stat. So you're just combining three stats where two of them are dump stats. So I think we're fine. But again, I'm, I want to test this out some, somehow. So yeah. Then I removed knowledge and replaced it with mind. Because in my mind or in my philosophy, I would say, I don't think that knowledge in of itself is an attribute. Uh, I mean, you have a knowledge or experience about a skill. So whenever you're skilled at something, you have knowledge and experience about that particular thing. But it doesn't mean that you're just generally knowledgeable. So the mind will be how to... it's logical thinking and recalling or uh, retaining information and all of these things that has to do with memory, logic and so on. Then you have the senses, which is um, basically senses as in uh, how good your perception is and how um, attentive you are and, and aware you are of different things. Now I probably want to also add in here, I want to add in um, your accuracy in a way. I mean let's say if you're lockpicking something, 
you're not using your body particularly like okay you're using your body but it's it's more your uh, fine motor skills which is more about sensing and and regulating feedback in in whatever you're doing so it's more in the senses category I would say so I think senses also would be like fine motor skills in, in some way or like being uh, very accurate and detailed I'm not sure but I think something in that regard then you have presence which is basically your presence your charisma and your your way of handling yourself and your body and how you present yourself but as you might have noticed now you're using uh, I'm, I'm basically going from having things that are very uh, or slightly overlapping right here to four things that are distinctly different things and so I would be a much more able to categorize uh, an action is to say this is something you use your body or your mind or your senses with and so that also means that combining these four here is a lot more harder than combining these five here so I'm not actually going to use only attributes in this combination thing I'm actually going to use skills Now, in the previous editions of my role-playing game, I had that attributes were using these here dice and that skills would alter by increasing or decreasing your dice. So that increasing uh, two dice was because you were a specialist in your field. But I think that using these five dice, you instead of having the uh, granularity of two which I used back then because you had you could increase it once or one die you could increase uh, if you were trained in a skill and then if you were specialized in a skill you would increase both dice which again works but I think it was better to have skills as a die because then you have a larger granularity you can have five uh, five different levels in a skill which is um, a lot more gives you much more freedom in how you want to handle your character plus when you're combining these two you get a lot more broader uh, spectrum of things like for instance if you have a very high body let's say you're 10 in body which means that you're very physically capable of doing stuff but if you have no skill in, let's say, athletics, that means you're very capable of doing things, but your knowledge and your experience with athletics and doing athletic things is very low. So that means that you would roll a d10 plus a, for your attribute, but a d4 for your actual skill in the thing. So that means that that would be a very, uh, you, you would probably get one success, but probably not a critical success. Uh, and with uh, a 10 and a 4, uh, you would have uh, a great advantage or disadvantage whenever that came up. Because if you got advant advantage, you would get a d10. Uh, or two d10s but if you got a disadvantage you would get two d4s which would probably make you fail something plus with this here way of doing it you can say also that if you have a very high uh, acrobatics you can say you have a 10 in acrobatics and it, that means also that if you have a 10 in body and 10 in acrobatics that would represent you being a very agile person but also meaning that when you're, if you have a low athletics, that means that you're very athlete, you're not very athletic, as in you can't lift or swim or run very fast, uh, or and so on. But you're very acrobatic, 
So having the skills count more in this resolution system, I think will help the overall resolution system as a whole. So that's what I'm doing. I'm still currently not quite sure what skills I'm going to use. I think uh, I want to have some um, um, about, I would say it's about um, yeah, 15 to 20 skills. Um, I'm not quite sure. I, I want it to be a low number, uh, but I want them to be very specifically uh, to this game. Uh, so, so things like uh, trading or maybe masonry or something uh, like that wouldn't be something that I added to this system because, again, masonry is not something that you would do while you're exploring. So I want uh, to sort of hone down the skills and try to figure out which one is supposed to do what. And I'll do that in the next episode. Uh, that's when I'm going to go through all the skills and how to, to model them and so on. But yeah, that I'll do in that episode. So my current now resolution system will be the same thing that you have attributes and you have skills. Each of them have a die represented here, either a d4, which is very bad, or a d12, which is very good, and anything in between. Then you would have the resolution system say, use one attribute and one skill that corresponds to whatever you're trying to do. And then you do that to take those two dice and roll them against the target value. One success is a success, two successes, which again, a success counts when you have equal to or higher than the target value. So uh, one success is a success, two successes, critical success, zero successes, fail, two ones is a fumble. And again, here you get the advantage disadvantage uh, becomes more prevalent and more useful and re-rolling also uh, it's the same usefulness actually increasing and decreasing will be then only focused on items and abilities that will increase or decrease your thing you don't use other things but so items I think specifically I want items to increase and decrease your your uh, your role, which will sort of separate them from the rest of the resolution system, which makes it more clear what will happen with your things. Then bonus and penalties, I don't really think I want to add that into the game. That means bonus and penalties, I mean, uh, plus or minus to the target value or plus or minus to any of your roles. I don't think I want to add that, but it is a possibility. But also, I also have the um, assisting here. That is a new thing that I can add, which is whenever you have uh, somebody wants to help you out with something let's say you're climbing and you have a uh, poor body strength let's say you're your d6 which is like normal you have uh, normal climbing a like normal person that tries to climb and you have no skills whatsoever in climbing or athletics um, now, I'm not quite sure how to model this, but I think I want to say that whenever you have no skills in anything, you don't use that die. Which again means that if you have no skills in athletics and you have a d6 in your body, that means that you only roll one die. And that means, uh, yeah, you yeah, something could be uh, done here. But also with assisting, somebody else can lend you their attribute or skill die and that is a very fun thing because then somebody who is very skilled at something doesn't only give you a plus two or a plus three or some other random bonus they will actually give you your die uh, or their die 
So that means that if somebody is a super good athletic person that wants to help you climb, will be able to lend you a d12 so then you roll a d6 and a d12 which is a lot more easier to uh, succeed your role and so assisting people and helping each other out with using their different skills and so on that is uh, in the resolution system a lot more beneficial to do than doing something on your own which again helps the resolution system work around this teamwork basis without having actual teamwork worked into the game so yeah i like this resolution system much better and i want to continue on uh, writing down it more specifically i'm currently working on that and then I want to work on the skills and how they um, work and how many skills and so on, what I'm going to do there. And so that will be next episode. I'll also probably take a few other stats and knock them off uh, in that episode as well. And then, yeah, I'm working towards uh, episode 25 where I will be, well, trying to make this role-playing game vertical slice version. So yeah, that was my episode for today. I hope you liked it. And if you did, please press the subscribe button, the like button and share this with your GM because he, he or she will probably like this as well. So see you again next, next time. Goodbye.